All right, welcome back to Swope Memorial Golf Course in Kansas City, Missouri. Local hickory golfer Chris Harriman is joining me for this round, and we are on the back nine now. Uh, back nine plays a little bit longer than the front nine, but still, total yardage of 57.70 makes this a short course, though the elevation keeps it tricky. Just a reminder, A.W. Tillinghast designed this layout in 1934, and I'm using my primary hickory set for this round, which includes two replica woods from Louisville Golf, five authentic irons, and my trusty Tom Stewart RTJ putter. And the ball I'm using is a custom Wilson staff zip with an antique mesh pattern. Here's a scorecard for the back. Number 10 is a par four, 370 yards named Rolly Bowley. And it starts out on an elevated tee uh, with a rolling fairway that leads into an elevated green. So after a front nine where I was spraying my brassy all over the place, I um, was hoping to right the ship here on the back. And that's a good start. Felt good to get that one straight down the middle finally. Got the rolly. See if you got the bowling. <laughs> and it set me up in a nice position here for my approach. Uh, sitting about 160 yards out using the Dysert Spalding 30 degree jigger. I hit that a little fat and pushed it a little right, so it came up short of the elevated the green. Shot. There was one option there. I set up this shot with my Tom Stewart mashie niblick, and the pin was in a tough spot um, today on the lowest tier of the green. From this position, all I could really do is just try to get it up on the green, and, and uh, both Chris and I trickled our approaches up to the top tier, yep, so we had some difficult putts down to the cup here, as you'll see. I'm just trying to feed mine close. I'm pretty satisfied with that result. Chris's putt was a little trickier. He had two tiers to navigate and uh, took him two putts to get down to the cup. I'm still having trouble with my reeds. It's another short to medium range putt that uh, was just offline. So number 11 is a par four, 340 yard hole named Ascend. Uh, it gets its name from this tee shot here, which is a blind uphill tee shot. And the play, obviously, is to just try to keep it straight and get up to the crest of the hill. And again, not too bad. It's a little off balance there and pushed it just a little right, but in the fairway, so I'm satisfied. Basically, I'm just focused on those smaller trees. I ended up pushing it left of that, but it turned out okay, even though I couldn't see where it ended up here. It's a good spot to miss. Yeah. So right in front of the green, using my mashie to bump and run this. It was right on line. So I'm stringing together some good shots here, feeling pretty good. This is a putt that I'm hoping by the middle of the season uh, is a lot more comfortable for me, but right now it's a knee knocker. And still burning the edge. Missing that for par. Closer and closer to actually making them. Yeah, well, I can't, I can't rip on your terrible play. Thank you. <laughs> so number 12 is a par five, 463 yards, named Long Tom. Another blind tee shot here. Uh, you don't want to go left. You've got tree troubles down there. Um, and right looks like it's trouble too, but there's actually more room over there than you realize, as I'm about to find out. end up pushing this tee shot. We thought it was going to be in more trouble than it actually ended up being in. That could be trouble. Trees, but that could be trouble. So 
So Chris's first two tee shots on the back nine put him in trouble right off the tee. So he's hoping to right the ship himself here. Well, a good strike there, even though he pushed it right. Yeah, I mean, compared to the other last two, though. Yeah. yeah. So here I am over on the right side. Like I said, um, there's more room over here than you realize, but this is going to be a tough shot in the summer when the rough is thicker. I was just trying to punch it back onto the fairway. Couldn't just came up good... short. That's the price oh, you pay for trying to do the smart fairway, thing. Though. All right. So now I'm using the Tom Stewart Auto Hackbarth 2 iron. The ball was sitting up pretty nice for me right here, about 160 yards out. And I got real nice contact with that one. One of my better shots of the round. I don't know what it did when I got up there. Couldn't tell where it ended up, but uh, I was real happy when I got up there to see it. Chris, on the other hand, is on the left-hand side here, and he's got a bit of a window between these two branches to push this ball through. This will be a trickier shot, too, in the summer when these trees have leaves. Uh, but for now, he's got plenty of room, I think. Yep. Ah, it a little. Yeah, but you got through the he's window. got unlucky here toward the green, Just put it a little too far left and ended up behind the hummocks there on the left side. Uh, I had a nice look here, though, and was using the mashie again with another bump and run. Got a nice hop off the fringe. Pretty much did it exactly how I was envisioning Thanks. it. And After almost that, have the same far. distance putt here as I did on the previous hole. Now uh, before that though, Chris had a nice approach putt that I couldn't get on video, but I got this part. Nice roll. And it settled nice and since I'm a nice guy. As bad as that, that hole one. was, tap in bogey's a great score. I thought I lost this. I lost this ball three times. Yeah, you'd think that uh, maybe I'd be getting the pace down now after having this putt two holes in a row. But that one I just put way too much on. Yeah, I'm getting better at these comeback putts, though. Yeah, fortunately that one dropped. So it takes us to number 13, par 3, 189 yards, called Devil's Gorge. Part of the green. Don't try to kill it. Chris is using a mid iron off the tee here. It's also taking just a little bit longer than normal to get set up. And uh, that's because he's starting to feel the pain in his shoes. His shoes were a half size too small. I think it's a great idea for every self respecting golfer to have an excuse in their back pocket as to why their swing deteriorates over the course of a round. And uh, shoes a half size too small is a good one, in my opinion. Good swing, bad strike. In all seriousness, um, I've played in shoes too small. It, you know, I have to commend Chris uh, for trying to find shoes that, that fit the uh, Hickory outfit. It's not easy to do. I've gone through my own trial and error. And uh, yeah, hopefully um, he finds some that fit better. Meanwhile, I'm using my 21 degree Jack White spoon here off the tee, inadvertently hitting a stinger. I got caught up in these rocks just short. Of the green, so now I'm using my mashy niblick to try to chip it up to a short sided pin. Yeah, that's all right. Left me with this short little bump shot with the flange niblick. One of my favorite shots in Hickory Golf. And let's take a closer look at that club. So it's my flange niblick with the Maxwell hosel made by William Gibson of Kinghorn, Scotland. The perforations in the hosel, that's the Maxwell design. Uh, moved weight from the hosel to the flange area. Uh, it's only 44 degrees of loft, which makes it a difficult club to use like you would a modern wedge. So I pretty much exclusively use it for little bump and runs like I just showed you. I told Chris this was going to look really cool on video from this angle. I think he wanted to Never make the putt <laughs> instead of this, but still, you know, not, not too bad from that distance. And again, if I had a tape measure, I bet this would be just about the same putt as the previous two holes here. So I'm getting a lot of practice with this one and doing the same thing pretty much every That's time, even though it seems like I'm figuring it out. That one felt very 
very different than the others that have existed. Number 14 is called the bend, and it's easy to see why. Big dog leg right. Yeah, I'm icing my toes when I get home. <laughs> The line here that Chris likes to take to cut off some distance is just inside of that tree line. So that's where he's going to line up with his swollen feet. And they look good. up cutting it a little close here maybe even shaved a couple of those oh, yeah. branches yeah. but uh, got the distance he wanted and was happy with where that ended up so I'm gonna try to follow the same line here and I ended up pulling it a little left it's a big fairway so I've never seen that part of this hole we're going to go check it out. The hole's, the hole's over here. I know. Anyway, right. <laughs> so I've got a blind shot here aiming for that clearing between the trees using the Jack White spoon. Oh, absolutely. And that was one of my best swings of the day. Terrible. <laughs> Is it terrible? <laughs> terrible. That was the best strike you've had all day. Yeah, it felt good. That was fantastic, but you're left, and I think it's long enough that you're in trouble. Okay. <laughs> so let's take a closer look at the Jack White Spoon. Uh, these are, this is one of the two replica woods in my bag, and, um, you know, basically, long story short, they're reliable clubs. Really great craftsmanship from Louisville Golf, and I don't have to worry about them breaking, which is why I use them in my primary set. So this shot ended up turning out okay, actually. Um, got a little bit of a chip here into the elevated green using the mashy niblick. Kind of expected I was gonna hit this past the green, but it was okay because the pin placement was toward the back. Oh. Chris almost hit that chip in. And I'm using my putter here to just bump it out of the rough like I did off the green on number nine. And I'm liking this shot. I think with a little bit more practice, I can that get these even closer. Put a little bit more on it. Basically like a little putter punch. So again, pretty much the same putt I've had on every green on the back there. nine so far. Yeah, I think that's the right stroke. And you know, even though that didn't go in, I was happy with the stroke there. So check out the view off the back of the green. Yeah, this is absolutely one of my favorite places. I always want to tee one up and just fire it that way. <laughs> It takes us to number 15. It's a par four, short par four, 287 yards. Uh, the green's protected by two bunkers and a very narrow chute from the fairway. I was hoping to be a little bit further left than that, but came over the top a bit. What a stop, though. Ended yeah, up getting a decent like bounce there, down. and it didn't go too far off the fairway. I'm laying up. Chris had the right play here with an iron off the tee. Oh, great Ended ball. Ended up hitting a beautiful shot. Perfect. 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 So, off the fairway here, using the mashy from about 135 yards out, as I mentioned, you've got a short bit of fairway that runs into the green in between the two bunkers, so it's kind of a tight fit there. And I ended up pushing this a little right. Fortunately, came short of the bunker. Yeah, not what I wanted. I think some people probably would have rather been in the bunker because this is a difficult chip over the bunker. But my, my sand play is terrible right now, so I was, I was happy to be out of the sand. Just using the mashing niblick to pop it up there. And just got unlucky with that bounce. Didn't get a lot of rollout on the green. Here's some Scorsese action to show you Chris's sand save here. Not bad. So I've got a long putt here for par. And just didn't read this green well at all. Didn't see that significant hump there. The ball's still moving. 
So now I know I got to hit this one harder. Knowing is half the battle. You got to you actually have to do it. Takes us to number 16, shortest par three on the course, 116 yards, called Little Joe. The hills on the left can be used to your advantage if you so desire to bounce the ball back in. Chris decided to go straight at the pin using his niblick. Oh, not bad. Just came not a little bad. short. Didn't think I had the club to get there. It's a nice distance for me to use the mashy niblick, the Tom Stewart mashy niblick. I didn't mean to put this that far left. Kick. There's the kick. Oh man, that bounced hard. Uh, and you, you, you don't have a look at the pin. Opted to use my mashie here to just bump this across a little bit of rough back onto the green. Ended up putting that right on line. I wanted that one bad. You couldn't see, but it lift out. A little bit bigger. I know. Another short putt here for par. Come on! Yeah, it just couldn't get it to drop. Number 17 is called Grand View. Uh, you'll see why in a moment. It's par 5, 538 yards. Uh, several blind shots on this hole before you get to see the green. And uh, the first shot here is over this waste area, kind of a, a intimidating shot with hickory clubs, knowing you really got to give it your all just to get it to the front of the fairway. Great shot. Fortunately, I put just enough on this one to barely Damn, get up man. there. Just barely caught the front of the fairway. <laughs> Made it. <laughs> That's pretty demoralizing when you feel like you hit a good one, you just see it barely make it into the fairway. Yep. Chris is lining up to do the same here. Jack White again. And another pretty good swing with it. You're going to like that. Left side. Hitting this club all right today. Yeah. I don't know why you're not taking that off the tee every time. You got about 200 in. <laughs> yeah, I got a little unlucky here. I'm not sure if I would have got more rollout or not, but um, it was in the 200 yard marker. And here I'm using my Otto Hackbarth uh, Tom Stewart 2 iron and something did not feel right on that shot. We'll take a closer look at the club first. Like I said, this was made for Otto Hackbarth when he was the pro at Cincinnati Golf Club in the mid-20s. Uh, it's 24 degrees of loft. And what I ended up finding out when I got this club home was that part of the cone inside the hosel had cracked. And uh, that was enough to give it a really weird feel when I hit shots. And um, I've since fixed it. So here's the reason the hole has the name Grand View. Look at that skyline, Kansas City on the horizon. Beautiful picture, postcard shot here. It's got the right distance, but I ended up pushing it a bit and uh, would end up finding a bunker on the right side. Here's my own postcard shot using my mashy from 125 yards out. And that, folks, <laughs> is why you need to make sure you also use a pin when you reset a head along with modern epoxy. Uh, this was an old reshaft for me before I realized that the pin was still necessary after all these years. So using my mashy niblick now to bump and run, uncomfortable shot for me. Uh, no excuse, still ended up putting it further on the green than I should, but I'm not really comfortable with that shot. That would have been an ideal shot for my mashy. So I've got a long putt here.
by this point, I'm just trying to keep all my clubs together. Clubs Got whipping coming off. Of off on my heads are flying off. Like a hobo hickory golfer. That's a very different Starting to get a little frustrated here with the putts. I'm saying nothing. Okay, so now we're heading home. Number 18 is a par four, 365 yard hole named like, Despair. Focus, about my Got shoes. an uphill <laughs> tee shot. Obviously, need to try to get it on that level plateau of the fairway. Otherwise, you're faced with an uphill approach. Modern golfers don't need to really worry about missing. The, the plateau on this fairway, but it's just long enough sometimes that if you're not accurate with the hickory clubs, uh, you could end up coming a little short. Uh, okay. I made made it up there, but I'm it. on the yep. rough on the well, right side. Find it, and I don't think the trees are in your way either. Okay. Fortunately, I didn't go far enough. Ended up finding it no trouble, but I'm using my mashy niblick here to try to get over this tree there go. and back Where into play. Uh, I'm going to go look left. All right. Again, would have been a shot I'd probably try with my mashie. All right, seriously, this would have been perfect mashie. What am I going to do instead? I'm going to try to run a mid, mid iron. Tom Stewart two iron here. Uh, even though, uh, in, in hindsight, I figured out that the cone was cracked on the inside of the hosel. Um, I didn't know that yet. I thought maybe it was the grip, so I'm still using it here. But there's another weird shot that I attribute to the hosel, or attribute to the cone. So here's Chris's approach into 18, using his niblick. Real nice oh, strike here. Good. Just came a little bit short. short. Probably, uh, is it short? A little short. A good swing, good cut. Yeah, it was a good swing. And I'm off on the right side here using the mashy niblick. That's probably yeah. what I would have used even if I had the mashy at my disposal. Uh, but my chips are just going too far today. And again, put this one on the back of the green. So using the flange niblick to just bump this back into, into onto the green. But let's pit, let's hit the putt. Didn't really judge the green very well there, so ended up putting that one pretty long. But sets up a dramatic final putt after a, an, a round of really short misses. Could I end this round on a high note and prove to Chris that I actually have putting prowess? Two putt from four inches. <laughs> well, I didn't get any of those on video, though. That's that's fine by me. So that'll wrap up this course vlog from Swope Memorial. Uh, I want to thank my host, Chris Harriman, for having me out. Looking forward to playing with him again. If you enjoyed what you saw, I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing. See you next time.